Hello, my name is Tessa. I'm speaking to you now from the rather unembodied position of last week, as this is a pre-recorded talk. However, I hope that in some way I can be felt in the room as well. And to borrow a line from one of the works I'm about to talk about, it's a little bit like we're touching, isn't it? As my voice vibrates your eardrums. But holding a voice, holding a person while they speak is different. Holding requires listening. So I invite you to listen, uh, as that's the only way I can interact with you really from my position here in the past, as I take this opportunity to try and in bring in some way together the two projects I've made funded by the Bristol and Bath Creative R&D programme, and perhaps in the process become hopeful about the future in some way. My hope for the imminent future is that that's as interesting for you to hear as it will be helpful for me to articulate, so here goes. It depends what kind of room I'm in, how I tend to answer the question, who am I and what do I do? When someone asks me at my university, I say, I'm really a documentary maker. Or if someone asks me at a film festival, I say, I'm a PhD researcher. And if someone were to ask me at an art show, I would say, oh, I'm a producer. I like to bring things together. But right now I'm speaking from a spare bedroom in Amsterdam because I'm showing a piece of work at IDFA Documentary Festival that opens today. Today, in this instance, being the moment that my voice hits your eardrums. So from here in this room, I'll say that I'm from the Bath, Bristol area, although I live in Scotland. And for the last six years or so, I've been exploring in different ways as a maker, a researcher, a curator and a producer. Interactive and immersive media, but mostly virtual reality documentary. More specifically, I explore to varying levels of success how these pre-recorded and pre-designed works feel or are experienced by their audiences as a live embodied event and how that liveness or bodiness could be used as the thing that communicates the non-fiction or documentary idea. In Club XXY, a research project and web-based VR documentary, I tried to articulate how normative scripts of performance, behaviour, movement of bodies are not only coded into the RL world around us, but that these scripts are often uncritically translated into virtual space. Through deploying and perhaps even expanding upon the practices of existing resistance spaces, so queer nights, trauma-informed events and accessible venues inside a virtual space, we could problematise this translation and propose alternate visions of what multi-user virtual space could look and feel like. In With These Hands, a headset-based VR documentary, I wanted to explore how VR might be an appropriate venue to listen to the complex, under-discussed and nuanced experiences of survivors of sexual assault and those around them. Not because VR allows you to feel as them, or even with them, as, like me now, they are pre-recorded and they can't feel you back but that VR embodiment could be a place to explore consent, listening, and through the audience's own embodied perspective as live participants, the politics of that listening. In this process, perhaps challenging the voyeuristic gaze of a traditional empathy-driven VR documentary. In both of these projects, I also explored how to make VR production processes more horizontal, um, how to incorporate diverse perspectives and multiple voices and attempted to move beyond an extractive storytelling process which positions a single director's creative vision and the emotional development of the audience as central at the expense of contributors' agency. In February 2020, I applied to the expanded performance Pathfinder. The Pathfinder explored new creative technologies as sites uh, for liveness and togetherness. My proposed project explored the future of multi-user online spaces as sites for expanded performance. And as I said, problematized the idea of just me merely recreating models of venues and public space as it exists in the real world. Obviously the project took on new meaning when in March, 2020, we were forced to engage with the world through majority online modes. Culturally, we became hyper aware of the need for embodied presence in our online engagement with others, evidenced by the huge uptake of video calling apps like Zoom. But also of how we move through space, uh, how we come into close contact with others, 
and most urgently through disability and racial justice movements, how not all public space is accessed equally, how some bodies are more monitored, more controlled and ultimately more exposed to violence. This research concluded in March 2021 with the creation of Club XXY, which is a scroll around 360 web-based documentary. The work consisted of a series of interviews with different experts, including critical architect Leopold Lambert of the Funambulist magazine, artist Danielle Braithwaite Shirley, who creates open world games as a method to archive black trans experience and uses interactivity to protect that archive from a voyeuristic gaze. I also interviewed three specific venues or club spaces, such as a queer BIPOC-centred Sober Harm Reduction Collective Misery Party, Bristol-based queer performance night Thorny, and Pink Peacock, a Yiddish anarchist pay-what-you-can cafe in Glasgow. I did an open call for illustrators whose work shared themes and concerns with the clubs interviewed, and my interviews were shared with the selected artists who created visual representations of the imagined virtual spaces discussed. Thanks to a template created by collaborating VR company Biome Collective, the artists didn't have to have a headset or any experience with VR. They could make the environments in any method they liked and upload their design into an online testing portal. Here you can see how queer collage artist JP Murphy was matched with Thorny uh, the result being an entirely collaged and scanned virtual environment. Organisationally, every collaborator on the project was paid the same, with my own fee being explicitly stated in the call out. And on top of this, collaborators were also asked to assess their fee and make sure they felt it was representative of their contribution. While being in many ways more accessible as a web-based VR rather than an in-headset experience, this did have consequences on what could be explored avatars, uh, a multi-user space and a more embodied experience of the space could not be facilitated in this version. The online space became a repository for the interviews and the artist's uh, work became more of a symbolic gesture towards the ideas raised in the research. Whilst lowering the bar to entry for the artist, the template method did have the effect of essentially boxing in the, the artistic ideas. And artists and space makers never got a chance to work together. The artists had only to work with my interviews, um, and particularly in the case of spaces and artists whose work centred black and people of colour, this created a barrier between the free exchange of ideas uh, that should not have had to perform to the white gaze of myself as the interviewer. In my next project, I wanted to explore ways of working with multiple artists and contributors that felt more iterative and reflective uh, rather than literally and figuratively sticking to a template. In making Club XXY, a space interviewed that was never realised was survivor-centred organisation Sleek. Sleek are a grassroots, survivor-run and centred fund, online community and submission-based blog. In my conversation with Sleek about XXY, we discussed their, Meg and Bryony, perspectives on the othering survivors' experience from themselves and their stories in media. I felt there was an alignment in their thoughts and a critique of a certain kind of VR documentary. Both medias focus only on the most traumatic parts of a subject's life and in fixing them as only that part, othering and ultimately dehumanising them under a guise of sympathy or empathy. The piece of work I proposed to make in consultation with Sleek utilised photogrammetry of hands and uh, the quest to hand tracking. It replicated a feeling of depersonalization and also self-reflection that I had previously experienced in VR, a sort of simultaneous self-othering and also a different comprehension of the embodied experience of others. I was interested in incorporating Sleek's message into what felt to me like a complementary medium, but also equally interested in working together to think out how a maker such as myself, uh, who's working in an unfamiliar to most medium, could work ethically with survivors to tell and centre their stories. Sleek were also looking to start a podcast where they platform survivor thought and stories. So to complete this bit of co-research, we co-applied to the Trailblazer Fund at the beginning of 2022. Together in a workshop between Sleek, myself and a group of survivors, we discussed consent agreements in documentary and within the university ethics approval. Both processes are traditionally designed to make work more ethical 
However, as a group, when we looked at the questions on traditional consent forms and ethics questionnaires, they so often seem weighted in the favour and protection of the filmmaker, not the contributor. In the context of university ethics, participants are infantilised as if they can't make informed decisions about an anonymity, for example, and are stripped of agency over the work and the process of making. You can only consent or not consent. There's no in-between. We live adjusted and made comments on prompts in a shared Google Doc. However, I must confess that the interactive doc didn't actually facilitate the conversation and I ended up taking notes on the spoken conversation, which was much more fruitful and free flowing. And this was a lesson to me uh, in the accessibility of the tech and, and the barrier it caused to co-collaboration. Through this workshop and others, we decided it was important for survivors' own writing and words to be used, that just like any other collaborating writer, they would have a chance to be named as they wished, and that like any other collaborating artist, they would be paid a license for their written work and likeness, to which they retain all copyright. This led to a contract drafted by Sleek and finalised in collaboration with the survivors whose writings were worked with. Our consent agreements became iterative processes of live edits to a consent document where myself and contributors met regularly to check in on the build assets, so the hand scans, the audio in the work and how the work was looking in a headset and decided in what ways to move forward. With These Hands has now gone through a period of R&D production in Sweden and Copenhagen as part of a separate um, university funded exchange and a prototype has been commissioned to show at IDFA. The real conclusion of the project, however, uh, will be when it, I show it to my collaborators and we decide collectively where to take the project next and what success for the project looks like moving forward. If I were to conclude on a hopeful thought for the future, with the time I have left, it would be that more makers in the immersive documentary space consider making their work uh, processes more lateral that we, as an industry, reflect on the crunch culture of production and the top-down hierarchies that don't make space for the reflection on work success and failures from multiple perspectives, and certainly makes it very hard to make soft and slow and consensual decisions in production. Thank you for listening.